And according to research, Gen Z is more readily predisposed to seek out relationships with AI-generated avatars. First, because they're comfortable using the technology in this way compared to previous generations. And also, they're participating less often in traditional social activities like regular family dinners or attending religious services or playing sports. And the question is, if AI relationships were to catch on broadly, what will this mean for society? Will kids actually stop going on dates because they can find better relationships online? And this is a real question because there are many startups currently blossoming to create chatbot-driven connections. I'll give you one example. There's a 23-year-old influencer with almost 2 million Snapchat followers. Her name's Karen Marjorie. And earlier this year in May, she released Karen AI, which is an immersive AI experience featuring videos of Margie that she says provide a, quote, virtual girlfriend for those who are willing to pony up uh, $1 per minute. Now, this is what's known as a companion chatbot. And she tweeted that, quote, Karen AI is the first step in the right direction to cure loneliness. Her tweet continues, quote, men are told to suppress their emotions and not talk about issues they're having. I vow to fix this with Karen AI. She says she's worked with leading psychologists to seamlessly include the right therapies to, quote, undo trauma, rebuild physical and emotional confidence, and rebuild what has been taken away by the pandemic, end quote. And by the way, as a side note, I think AI psychologists are going to be a truly important part of the clinical landscape by next year, because you can have a therapist that you can talk to 24-7, and the therapist never gets distracted or flustered and only cares about you and has a perfect memory for everything you've ever said, which is better than anybody else in real life. So back to AI girlfriends or boyfriends, the same idea applies here, which is that they are completely devoted to you and always in a good mood and only have you in mind. So what are AI relationships going to mean? Well, I think this is going to be a research question that sociologists and psychologists will study for the coming decades and centuries. The initial studies are suggesting that people, mostly Gen Zers, are moving closer to the technology to avoid the unpleasant realities of human relationships, all the tough stuff. Is that detrimental? Well, it could be if it makes your human relationships harder. Because maybe every time you guys have an argument in real life, your partner thinks, well, forget it. I'm bagging this. I'm going back to my comfort zone. So the concern, as you can probably guess, is that the rise of AI-driven relationships could exacerbate loneliness because they seem to be a meal, but they provide no calories. And I'll come back to that in a moment. In other words, AI-generated avatars could interfere with the relationships that young people are just learning to foster because the AI relationship might breed dissatisfaction with flawed humans. And this applies not only to lovers, but even to friends. It might be easier to have AI friends who aren't busy when you need them and can give you 100% of their attention whenever you need it. And let me throw in a different potential problem with AI relationships. So give me one second to take this tangent here. I was thinking the other day about the Fermi paradox. The Fermi paradox is given the size of the observable cosmos with over 100 billion galaxies and each of them with 100 billion stars and each of those surrounded by some number of planets, what is the reason that we have not heard from any other alien species yet? And one of the proposals that has always been there is that maybe as civilizations become more technically advanced, they end up killing themselves. And this is why we haven't heard from other smart civilizations because they are already gone. And every time I've seen this proposal, it's always in the form of warfare, things like nuclear bombs. They end up wiping themselves out. So civilizations become smart and it's not long before they disappear. 
So, in thinking about AI relationships, it struck me as a possibility that if we had really, really great relationships with avatars, perhaps that would cause the birth rate of the species to collapse. I don't know if this has been proposed as a possible answer to the Fermi paradox, but maybe this should be included. Not civilizations disappearing because of bad things, but instead from having too much of a good thing, which could fool and eventually overwrite our mandate for reproduction. Okay, so no one knows what the long-term effects will be of these AI relationships, but I don't actually think the situation is as dire as some of these arguments suggest that it is. And I'll make two arguments to this end. The first revolves around human touch. We are deeply wired to care about touch. I'm going to do a whole episode on touch in the near future, but the bottom line is that touch helps us to connect with others, to feel safe and secure, to regulate our emotions. When you get touched, your brain releases oxytocin, which is a hormone that has calming effects and bonding effects. And oxytocin helps to reduce stress and anxiety. It can even boost your immune system. So we need touch to feel connected and loved, and a lack of touch leads to loneliness and depression and anxiety. So we're deeply programmed for touch and also things like smell. And so it would presumably be quite lonely if all you had was the 5% better partner on a screen and you're just exchanging text messages or just an avatar you can look at on your phone, or maybe even in the near future, you'll have a 3D avatar projection in your living room. But you won't have the hand squeeze and the hug and other forms of physical intimacy. Now, I assume people are working on AI robots that can provide touch, even something simple like touching your shoulder or laying a hand on your hand, and I can't imagine that it's going to be too hard to do. And it'll probably be not that great at first, but after a few tech cycles, you can imagine, it could get pretty good. But in any case, at the moment, if you have a girlfriend who just lives in several square inches in your phone screen, you're going to be missing out on this fundamentally needed aspect of human communication that our brains seek. So the depth to which our brains are wired for touch suggests to me that the reach of AI partners into our lives is going to be limited because, at least as currently devised, their algorithmic reach never actually contacts our skin. And so that will be continued to be sought.